Praise God. Our topic today is the power of the tongue. Tell your friend the power of the tongue. Amen. I request us to arise for the scripture reading. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Proverbs 4:23. One, two, three, go. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Once again, church. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Praise the Lord. Put up your hands one, once again to Jesus for Dad Alfred Kyok. Celebrate Jesus until he comes here. Do you understand? Celebrate Jesus. You can make shouts of joy for Jesus because of that Alfred Kyok. Amen. 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 I, we can pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we honor you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We are here to hear from you, Lord. I pray that through your servant, you will speak to us, Lord and meet the desires of our hearts that is to hear you and to know you more we give you glory and we give you honor it is in the name of jesus christ i make this prayer in faith amen welcome good morning I say good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Are you happy? Are you fine? I'm very sure you had a good night. The Lord has been with you, has preserved you, and uh, he has given you an opportunity to be seated here today so that you can hear from him. Praise the name of Jesus. And uh, one thing I know is that, and it is my prayer this morning, that God speaks to your heart. Praise Jesus. That God speaks to your heart. That is my prayer this morning. Let me tell you something. That when you have an encounter, just one encounter with God, your life will not be the same. And it is my prayer this morning that God will visit somebody today. Listen, when I say that, I know. Because last year on April, he visited me. And my life was changed. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Today, I'm a different man. Of course, I'm better than when I left here. Praise the name of Jesus. It is because of an encounter that I had with the Lord. And it is my prayer this morning that as we share and break the bread of life, you may have an encounter with the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. How many are expectant of the Lord? Prepare your heart. Listen. God cannot impose himself on somebody. When you invite him, he will come. Praise the name of Jesus. And before the, I share with us about the power of the tank, uh, I want to talk to elders. Elders in the house, praise the Lord. Elders in the house, yesterday's service was beautiful. It was awesome. And I'm telling you, you are wonderful guys. You people are good. You people are good. And I'm privileged to have got an opportunity to witness, to be a witness of your elders day stroke night. Because you said that too, right? Yes. Uh, before that, for the elders, I have a message for you. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 9, verse 1 through verse 3. Bishop, just allow me to share this because I feel in my spirit I should say that. Let's go.
briefly the same book, chapter 8, verse 15. That is for you elders. The Lord has gone ahead of you. The Lord has gone ahead of you. And your theme first was, is from actually Romans 8, 37. That you are more than conquerors. The question for you this morning is this, elders. You'll get out. Yes, you'll get out. You're born again, spirit-filled. But when you get out there, I know we have three categories among the. Some of you already you have jobs. Some of you already have jobs. You know when you get out you have a job, so you don't have stress. We have another category. You don't have a job, but your uncle, your parents, guardians, they're somewhere there, so you know you are safe. And we have the third category. The third category. In fact, even finishing your studies has been called. And in fact, you don't even know where to start from. And sometimes you try like, okay, Doubt is a bit higher than faith because like you try to figure out where would I start when I go out there. This is your message. That God has gone ahead of you. Listen this. What matters in life is who walks with you. Do you get what I'm saying? The Bible says in Deuteronomy, listen, Today, you Israelites, you are about to cross Jordan. And I want you to know that river was so mighty. So mighty. But listen. When those guys went there and they were about to cross the river, they measured the waters. Measuring the waters, the waters were deep. The next thing, in fact, lifting up their feet and stepping on the water. What happened? The Bible says the waters flee before them. Reason? God went ahead of them. You don't know about Anakites. Anakites are giants. Read the Bible. Giants! Do you know who is a giant? You have not seen one. I have not seen one. But the Bible says Anakites were giants. The guides who inhabited the land of the land of Canaan, where they were going. But the Bible says God told them, don't be afraid. It is him who will go ahead of you. Like what? A raging fire to destroy them. So you are safe. Don't worry, you are safe. Nothing, even your blessedness, will not cause you to drop your faith. Your blessedness should not at all cause you to drop your faith. Stand firm, confront any challenge. When the world throws things at you, you know, hit by those storms, stand firm because nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Read well that, that chapter of Romans. And you shall know. Paul was saying, what shall separate us from the love of God? He mentioned several things there. Depression, so many things. Amongst those things, will joblessness cause you drop your faith? That is the question. The message is the power of the tank. Praise the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor the power of the tank. And I want us to turn to the book of James, chapter number 3, verse 6. The power of the tongue. 
And I will not find what the tank is because you know that. You know that. I will not define. You know what the tank is. The Bible says in James 3, 6, the tank also is a fire and a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course on his, on his life on fire and itself set on fire by hell. Seven. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. Continue. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. The tongue is one of the smallest organs we have. But it plays a very critical role. Very critical role. And we are, when we talk about the tongue, I'm talking about language. Talking about language. Praise the name of Jesus. Listen. Let me start with the scripture. Anyway, Let me start with the scripture. I want us to go to the book of Matthew. Chapter 12. So that my, what I want to say will become relevant to you. 12, 33 through 37. The book of Matthew. Let us read together. louder. I wanted to say this, that the condition, the state of your heart informs your speech. Praise the name of Jesus. The condition, the state of your heart informs your speech. The Bible clearly says that there is no way that a good tree can give or can produce but fruits, right? A good tree produces good fruits. A bad tree actually produces bad fruits. And the Bible says it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaketh. In fact, it is what you take in, what you feed your heart with, it is exactly what will produce. Listen, your input determines your output. Right? So, whatever you take in is what you'll give. You won't give out what you don't have. Praise the name of Jesus. So, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So, our tongues are small. Very small organs. But plays a critical role 
in fact in James the bible says it can even corrupt the whole small but it can corrupt the whole body and it will cause the same body and the tank itself will be thrown into hell fire praise the name of jesus the book of mark the book of mark chapter 7 verse 15 through 23 we look that uh, we will know that the content what we take in is exactly what we will give out listen nothing outside a man can make him unclean right nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him so food food what you eat cannot contaminate you cannot make you unclean but rather it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean right let's continue after he had left the crowd and entered the house his disciple asked him about this parable yes let's continue Are you so dull? He asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? Let's continue. For it does not go into his heart. It does not go where? Into his heart. But into his stomach. So food goes to the stomach. Let's continue. And then out of his body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. Let's continue. He went on. What comes what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, from the heart, for from within, out of man's heart comes what? Let's go together. Yes. Twenty-three. So, a tongue. When you have a good foundation, when you feed yourself with the right information, when you feed your heart, in this context, with the word of God, when you feed yourself, your heart, with the word of God, None of these things mentioned here will come out of you. Why? You are a good tree. For a tree to become good, to produce good fruit, you have to take care of it, right? There are things, there are nutrients that you give to the tree, you prune the tree so that it gives good fruit. Listen. Because you are a tree. The Bible is not a tree actually. You are a branch. You are a branch. Price is that fine. So for you to produce good fruits. Feed your heart with right things. The tongue is very powerful. Words are powerful. You even know from your community that they know, apart from even the Bible, from your community, they even know that the tongue is so powerful. Words are powerful. Language is powerful. Praise the name of Jesus. I want us to look. Look chapter 6. Look chapter 6. 43 through 45. No good tree bears bad fruit. Not bad, nor does a bad tree bears good fruit. 44. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. That's 45. The good man, the good man, the righteous, the believer, brings good things 
out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the flow, of a flow out of the alpha flow of his heart, his mouth speaketh. The scripture reading we read today by your secretary is actually, the Bible says, above all things. Above all things. The Bible says, guard your heart, for out of it, the Bible says, flows the wellsprings of life. Praise the name of Jesus. So take care of your heart, because it form your language. Now, uh, I want us to read the book of Proverbs 18, 1820. 1820 Proverbs. The Bible says, let's go. Let's do louder, please. The tongue has the power of life and death. The tongue has the power of life and death. So that means with the tongue you can create. And with your tongue the same tank you can destroy. So the question is, do you normally create or do you normally destroy? But we be careful. It is the smallest organ. But the Bible says it has the power of life and the power of death. And the Bible says our stomach will be satisfied by the fruits of the time. Language is life. Language is life. No wonder people in the university we, 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 okay, we have some courses to do with communication skills. Praise the name of Jesus. Because language is life. Language is life. Praise the name of Jesus. So we should use our language, I mean our tongues rightly. Use your tongue rightly. You are a good tree. You don't, you don't produce bad fruits. You don't produce bad fruits. Proverbs 12, 18. Proverbs 12, 18. Proverbs 12, 18. Now, look here. The tank has the power to create and the tongue has the power to, 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 to destroy. A tongue can heal. A tongue can inflict a wound. Reckless words. That's what. Like what? Praise the name of Jesus. Reckless words. That means if your speech, if your language is not edified, the Bible says it's like a sword. What does a sword, what is the work of a sword? A sword can kill. A sword can destroy. So your, your tongue is a sword. Hello? Your tongue is like a sword. So be careful. No wonder the Bible is warning us that it can even take the whole body to hell. Reckless words pass like a sword. But finish there. But hello, wave at me, please. The tank of the wise, the tank of a Christian, the tank of a believer, the tank of him that loves God. The Bible says that same time will bring healing. 
Hello. A tank can bring healing. So we don't kill others. Now listen. This comes uh, okay, uh, uh, okay, how do you normally talk? How do you normally communicate with your friends? Because there are people, by the way, listen, watch and try story. Uh, we normally know when a man wants to approach a lady. Right? Men in the house, praise the Lord. So now you hear, my phone is so heavy. So heavy. But when it comes to approaching a woman of God, you soften the voice. The language becomes different. Listen. Language. Language is so powerful. Praise the name of the Lord. Language is so powerful. So we be careful on how we use our tongues. Don't be rude. Why be rude? We should not be rude. You know, there are people who are very rude by the way. And do you know what? Proverbs 22, 11. I want to show you something here. Don't be rude. Be nice. Talk well with people. Talk nicely. Praise the name of the Lord. Probably even some people will lose friends. Not because, just because of how they talk. Brother, praise the Lord. Amen. No, you are so unfriendly. Okay, just be soft. What does the Bible say? Good speech, good language. Benefits of good language. You talk nicely, you'll have friends. You talk nicely, you have friends. Praise the name of Jesus. Because if, for example, we are having a conversation for the first time, for the first time, the first time, the way I will talk to you determines if we will continue with the friendship or not. Because if I'm your acquaintance, it's the first time, the way we will talk will determine if we will continue with become friends or we, our friendship will just end there. So, pray that God will help you that you that go to end the uh, So, speech. Will, uh, the person with a gracious speech, the Bible says, will have a king for his friend. The book of Ephesians 4.29 Ephesians 4.29 Ephesians 4.29 Ephesians 4.29 the power of the tank. The power of the tank. What does the Bible say? Let us read all of us. Amen. The Bible says we should not let what? Unwholesome talk. Colossians 4 6. Colossians 4 6. The Bible says, Right? So our speech conversation be full of grace, seasoned with salt. So that then, because a bad speech can crash. You know, with our language, we can either encourage or discourage. So, ours is to encourage, right? So, the responsibility we have is to edify, not to discourage. Now listen, the book of, the book of Numbers, I will paraphrase that story. Numbers 14. We have, you know these 14 guys, the 12 guys I mean, the spies sent to explore the land of Canaan. We have 12 of them. 
10 brought a bad report. Two, that is Caleb and Joshua, brought a good report. Listen, the ten that brought bad report, the Bible says they incited people against God. Language, language. They incited people against God. Language. Language. So, we are supposed to use our language to influence positively, not negatively. Si pale mahali ya kuna watu wengi ama kuna kitu tunafanya tunaenda kuwachomea wengine backbiting. Si hivyo. Praise the name of Jesus. But Caleb and Joshua, the Bible says they were men of a different spirit. They talked so nicely about God. Praise the name of Jesus. So nicely about God. And they told people, yes, it is true, we have an archive there. But remember, the one who brought us, who made a way in the Red Sea, is the same, same God. These guys are small. It is him that said, go ahead of us like a raging fire. So we go and we'll conquer them. Praise the name of Jesus. So use your tongue rightly. Use your tongue rightly. Uh, the book of Proverbs, because we'll concentrate on Proverbs because this great man, this great scholar called uh, Solomon, uh, I think he did a lot of research on several issues. And Proverbs 18, 4. We, we read what the Bible says. Proverbs 18, 4. Yes. 5. Now listen Come back Please Back to the scripture Now do you have You have another passion Give us another passion Do you have TLB Okay anyway NIP a fool's, a fool's lips bring him strife, and his mouth in fights. Read it. The tongue. Let's continue with the same fashion. Let's continue. Let's go to verse seven. Yes. So you can ensnare yourself, you can free yourself. A fool's is mouth is his undoing, and his lips are snared to his soul. Eight. Gossip. Tank. Gossip. Okay, please back to verse 8. The words of a gossip are like choice muscles. They go down to a man. Proverbs 13, 2. The Bible says, enjoys good things. But unfaithful have a craving for violence. Next verse. So we be careful. It's not good to be a chatterbox. 
you talk a lot. At least up of you. Okay, it's good to talk, but you balance everything. He who guards his lips guards his life. He who guards his tongue guards his life. I pray that today because somehow, you know, probably some of the issues we have is as a result of the words. Maybe we even spoke so many years ago, some time back, but you may not know, but they have become a snare to you. But today there is grace. There is an opportunity that will ask God to have mercy on us. And from today, we shall be careful on how we shall use our tongues. Praise the name of Jesus. Because we guard our lips. What the Bible says, we guard our life. So you are careful with your lips, then your life is good. Your life is safe. But he who speaks rashly, you speak and howl, <laughs> will come to ruin. So destruction. And the Bible says, where there is too much talking, too much speaking, Sin, because you will speak a lot of stories, especially people who love stories. You don't get back on answer, create some stories. I could not answer with Angani. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. By the just be honest, don't come in Asia's image. To me, you know, stories. So don't try to. Because rashly can't read. The Bible says, a fool, it is only a fool who ensnares his soul with the words of his mouth. Only a fool. Praise the name of Jesus. 1624, Proverbs. Amen. Power of the tongue. 1624. What does the Bible say? This is true. Have you found yourself, you are so discouraged? Okay. You are discouraged, but probably you went somewhere. My own experience, and you feel low, you feel low. And in your conversation with probably your friend, he says one thing that stabs up your spirit. You feel like, hey, Sasa Nikopoa. Because pleasant words are a honeycomb. They are a honeycomb. They are so sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Praise the name of Jesus. We will build others. We will not destroy them. In the name of Jesus. And even when we are angry, we will not curse. Because the Bible says, them that hate your enemies, we don't curse them. Because we don't produce bad fruits. Curses are not good. Are curses good? They are not. We don't produce bad fruits. We bless. The Bible says, they curse you, we bless them. Because brother, sister, you are tongue has power. When you cast people, they shall be cast. When you bless them, it will exactly be that. Praise the name of Jesus. How many will start blessing people today? I know they have wronged you. They have done you. So, I know that there is a mistake that person did to you. But my message to you this morning is this. Don't cast them. Don't cast them. The Bible does not allow us to do that. Praise the name of Jesus. Because we don't produce bad fruits. We give good fruits. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes 5. The book of Ecclesiastes 5. So that we be careful on how to sometimes, even when we go before God. The Bible says, by the way, that it is with the same word that we will be acquitted 
declared righteous. And with the same words from your mouth, the Bible says you will be content. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says, let's go. Yes. Do not be quick with what? With your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter, utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Let our words be few. In fact, when a fool sips up his mouth, people will confuse him with a wise man. He'll be counted wise. 1728 Proverbs. The Bible says, let's go. It is true. Even a fool is not to be wise. If he does what? And discerning if he holds his tongue. Fifteen one. The same book. Fifteen one. Proverbs. I'm finishing. I have five minutes to go. What does the Bible say? So learn how to talk to people. Because when you are so harsh, you will crush the spirit of that man or that person. Because harsh word crushes the spirit. But you know, you give a gentle answer, you talk nicely to people. Even when they had intent of doing harm to you, because of your gentle answer, what will happen? Rattle. Turn away. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we be on our feet as we read the book of Proverbs 2019. The Bible says a gossip what does the Bible say? Right? A gossip betrays a confidence. So you don't have to say everything. Learn to be calm. Learn to be silent. You don't have to speak every time. In fact, don't you know? The reason why there are things that did not succeed. You wanted to do them, but they have not prospered. It is because you talk too much. In fact, it does not mean you are so good when you give everything you have in your heart with people. In fact, learn to, to have... Okay, uh, the inner circle, the inner circle, people who are so close to your heart, the other group of people learn not to share your life your life with every person and if your friend trusts tells you something that is confidential keep it confidential don't be a chatterbox don't be don't, don't, don't talk too much don't because it betrays confidence. You'll start losing friends. Maybe even I'm talking, and maybe somebody is here, and you fought with your friend. Reason? Because there is a secret. There is something he told you. He or she told you. And it, the message 
focus please i only share with you don't share with anybody else and after a few days he got a leakage he got that story and honestly that story he has only one person he only shared with you then who leaked that story it is you from that day your relationship with that person will end We build with our language. We don't destroy. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Even our enemies. So avoid the man. This is the word of God saying. Avoid. It is not me in fact. The Bible says you should avoid the man who talks too much. Because you don't know if you will just your secret with, with him. And Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. So I want us to, you to ask God this morning. You may have things, probably even harsh words you spoke to your friends, maybe to your parents. And listen to me. What can have so much impact in the life of a person? And they may never forget what you say. It may take a lot of time for them to forget and even to forgive you. So be careful not to say harsh words on other people. In as much as you will review, but be careful. Be choosy with your words. Don't kill. Because the Bible says we should edify. What does the Bible say in the book of Ephesians? The Bible says not even a wholesome talk. None of, you should not allow a wholesome talk to come out of your mouth. But it is only what is helpful to others. Praise the name of Jesus. So I want you to open your heart to God. And if there is something you've ever said to anybody. And you know it is not something nice. You have hurt somebody because of what you have said. Ask God to forgive you. And from today in the name of Jesus. You shall be careful on how you use your time. In the name of Jesus. And I shall pray that if there is a snare in your life because of your word, today there is a grace to free your life in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Can be given a number as we worship in the precious name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Lago so bragandabos, lando brekatos. La paraganda basu, le pacus abregandos, le tecos abricana mahate, shetele baraganos. Father, thank you this morning. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your grace. Raka magatash, le baradash. Rakazako ziwe nami. Mapenzi yako yawe na mimi Na macho yako yawe na Sema kwa mkono wako Christ and this morning you've had the word of God 
and you say, I want to surrender my life to Christ. Are you there? If you are there, shoot up your hand. Anybody want to give your life to Christ? Shoot up your hand if you're there. Shoot up your hand if you're there. Amen. Now listen to me. My time is up. But if you are here and you are sick, shoot up your hand wherever you are. I'll pray for you. Wherever you are. In your faith as healing. In the name of Jesus. And if you have any other need, shoot up your head. Any other need, there is something that you're asking God to do for you. I'll pray for you. And the Lord shall meet that need. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. The Bible says you send your word and you heal them. And you deliver them from their destruction. This morning, Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, look at the lifted hands. You know their hearts. You understand their needs. And I pray that you meet them according to your riches in glory. In the name of Jesus. Them that are sick, right now I speak healing in your bodies. In the name of Jesus. Right from your head. To the sole of your feet. I speak healing right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Every sickness. Every illness and infirmity. Right now I speak to you. In the name of Jesus. Disappear forever. From that body. In the name of Jesus. Receive your healing now. Any other need I pray. The further you meet them. In the name of Jesus. The discouraged, the hopeless. Give them hope. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. 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 Praise the Lord. Have we been ministered to? Yes, we bless the Lord for, for the service.